Let's chant uh, 10 times Amitabha. 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 Amitabha, dear brothers and sisters. Um, thank you for coming to our um, Mr. Yu Who Meet the Kitchen Gods uh, second reading, uh, second half of it. So this book, uh, as I mentioned last time, it's very short but very concise based on the experience of Mr. Yu who met the, um, the celestial being called Kitchen God. And the context has been mentioned, but just for a short summary, uh, what we talked last time basically is uh, more in detail because this kind of book cannot be done in one go. And that's it. You have to do it as like um, but you do every morning when you wake up, right? You want to look at the mirrors. You want to look the best version of yourself. For me, I shave, I brush. Same thing for everyone, you know. You want to see if everything goes wrong. So this is like a mirror. You have to look at it every day, uh, or any time when you're aware of it. So, uh, right now at the second readings, we go a little bit more in detail than last time. Uh, we talk about who Mr. Yu is, why his name is called pure mind and we will understand later um last week last session we have um maggie and uh auntie Yenzi and also uh, brother kim who join us and we have a very good discussion about um uh, the, 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 the actual you know the um mr yu's um, encounters and how it changed him basically we already talked about the whole book in discussion but we'll still go through it today because there are a few parts that are not quite clear when we do the first or first half of the reading. Um, this time, I, I I hope that we can add more value to this uh, repeated reading. So, Mr. Yu so far has encountered this um, celestial being called the Kitchen God or the Stove God. Actually, it's this called Stove God. Zhao is stove. So, um, Mr. Stove, Mr. Stove, Mr. Stove God came in the form of Mr. Mr. Zhang, um, the surname Zhang. So this Mr. Zhang has told him about his faults. His most of it is his mind is not pure. His um, heart is not sincere. Basically, he's not being genuine. Uh, everything was uh, put on a show rather than truly want to do, uh, truly want to benefit people, truly want to help people. Um, so it becomes like a you know by double faced person. So that's his biggest fault that caused him all this misery. Um, and he was awake by this um, strong, powerful words of a reminder, a warning. And obviously, he um, being very respectful to Mr. Uh, Sofgod, and he were, he takes it very well. Obviously, um, he has given, and then after bringing out his fault in speech, thoughts, and actions, um, he brings uh, suggestions how to amend it and um, there is a place where i actually not clear before but i would like to clarify the sexual misconduct phrase so because his mind is full of that um lust and even though he didn't do it at first this is according to the book but you must practice not to move when you look at the uh, pretty woman or pretty men and um in his case mr Zhang has advise him to learn from Mr. Lu. Actually, this in Chinese is called Jun Zi Fan Shen Dang Qi Jing Nen Ru Lu Nan Zi Hu. I have made a little reading while on a train to work. And Lu is actually a country. And it's back in spring and autumn period. It's Confucius nation, the nation of Lu. Back then, China was not united. And this man came from a nation called Lu. So a man from Lu, like a man from US or a man from Australia, basically an Australian man. So this Lu man, this man from Lu, uh, nation of Lu, uh, has this thing recorded and praised by Confucius. And this is about how a person understand his ability, his level 
of cultivation or his level of um, uh, cultivation and act accordingly. Instead of trying to emulate someone who is much better cultivated and trying to do what the other people do, end up failing. So how does that work? I'll call him Mr. Liu for the ease of addressing. Mr. Liu, um, this man from Liu, has also the same encounter as a person before him. That one is called Zhou Huai Bu Luan. Uh, this person, this predecessor, has a higher level of cultivation. Um, story goes like this. This is about sexual misconduct. So how to prevent lust overtaking it. And obviously, um, the predecessor of this Mr. Liu, uh, means is Zhao Huai, Zhou Huai Bu Luan, something like that. And that man is well known for having um, a very cold, almost frozen to death woman in front of him, his residence. And he um, used a blanket to cover her and use his body warmth to, to give him give her the warmth to protect her from uh, death by hypothermia. But he does not do anything beyond that. Because usually when you have close contact with opposite gender, usually the hormones and everything works and people might not be able to control it. And this is recorded in the book. Uh, mentioned by a lot of Confucius scholars, and he's the he's the he's the, say, he's the golden set standard of a person who can withstand his lust, and not uh, and then truly compassionate, truly want to care for people without giving in to his own personal desires. But Mr. Liu did not do the same as this predecessor of his, because he also has the same case where a I think a single unmarried young woman is, who is a neighbor uh, lived next to him and this woman's house has been blown away by tornadoes and she has nowhere to live um, she's very like she, she's not frozen to death but she has nowhere to live so she knocked on the door of this man and this man lived by himself as well um, so you know like he understand that he does not have the ability to because when she leaves it's not one day two days few months and as per biology and human things goes a few months is more than enough to cultivate that thing out of it you know the, the emotions and lust and all that so he has been very cautious and he's like sorry I can't accept you into the room but not because that I don't want to help you because I understand my ability is not there yet and so he refer her to a place where you know government area where she can seek shelter basically he refused um, entry to the lady into his own private residence. Um, that's his story and that's um, bring out by the stove god uh, to Mr. Yu, ask him to emulate this person. This person has lost but he understands his ability. He knows that he could not withstand it as strong as the person before him. Um, I think Chinese would know this uh, it's like sitting in your lap but your heart do not get moved uh, opposite gender or in, in modern times even same gender but anyway so the point is um, know where you are know your standard know your ability know your uh, capability your cultivation and act accordingly on the surface it might look like he's very heartless like oh why you ref refuse someone but he understands that if this goes on for long term, uh, first thing is back in the day, reputation is very important, especially for women. And if she has been, you know, even they did nothing or anything, the reputation on her would not be good if they live one by one. Uh, so it's kind of a protection to her as well. And second thing is he understands he would not be able to withstand it as well as this gentleman before him who can hug a frozen uh, thing a woman who's near to death in his arm but without uh, allow for whole night without giving rise to any thought of lust so he understand he's not there yet so he refused he prevented all at all from happening so indirectly he's telling mr yu you should learn from this i know that you don't have the ability to withstand it obviously so so do i and so do like be honest right about your capability but you can prevent it you can stop that condition from happening so um this is quite insightful for me uh, i just want to share with you guys um because this is more in-depth understanding so i don't know who lu nanzi is when i talk it two times 
everyone's like, I was like, oh yeah, I don't know who Lu Nanzi is. So apparently he's very good at pretending this thing. And then, yeah. But there you go. Like, you know, like reflect. Reflection is also a, a way to understand where you are. And I, I always tell people, like, I don't know, no matter where I am, I just told them, if you know your bottom line, if you know what ground you stand on, no matter how low it is, how, well, you know, like, not as glamorous or as uh, excellent as other is, but as long as you know where you are, you can start building up. You can start, mm. you can start the real work. The worst part mm. is you don't know where you are, you thought you're there, and then the real mm. thing happens to you, and then you go, oh, I, I just realized I can't handle it. And then mm. you, you, you're, you're forced into that situation. Then you like, what should I do? Now I'm hanging in the air. So either I mm. fall or either I go up. So it's it's the worst scenario you don't want to put yourself in. The best scenario is you know that you're not there yet. So I'm mm. going to work my way up. What's the way I can work my way up from the level I am? And mm. th above all this, we still need to have... Uh, yeah, I also mentioned that. I will mention later. We also need to have a okay. sense of um, understanding and confidence uh, where we want to go. But at the same time, we understand our actual ability uh, and, mm -hmm. and how much it takes to build up that capability. So it takes time. So, so Mr. Um, Mr. Zhang has um, uh, given a very good uh, example to Mr. Yu and all of us. Mr. Lu, uh, Lu Nanzi, uh, we can just research um, Lu Nanzi if you know Chinese. But here you go. That's the, basically the story. It was given by Confucius himself. So it's even better. Confucius recorded this in his Andalax or something, Lun Yu, or, or one of his speech, I think it's Andalax. He, he just praised Mr. Lu as he, he, he prevents accident from happening. He Not only he protects the woman in terms of her, you know, um, while well, using a Catholic term, chastity, which is quite, quite the same thing, zheng jie, huh? chastity. Um, also, he protects himself from a life of regret or causing harm to others. He, he knows that he don't want to allow any accident to happen, so he does not allow it at all. Um, and that is what compassion is about. Compassion is like not saying that you, it does not need to necessarily shown in the form of oh, hugging, loving and all that. It, it means you really take care of that. You understand that circumstance, you actually apply what's best at that circumstance, what's best for them and yourself as well. And, and it helps them in the long run. So back to the point. Um, and yes, if you can do as this um, man from Lu, uh, you know, for whole life, he, not, he did not taint himself with um, any uh, misconduct in, 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 in lust or did not give in to lust, then you could treat everything without any guilt. So you, you'd be, um, in a sense, you feel liberating. You don't feel like, you know, uh, being uh, ridden with guilt or being ridden with all this um, driven by all, uh, being slave to these desires. Basically, he's free. He's a free man in in, in true sense. Um, yes. So, he used that and then he said, um, if you follow this, I mean, you're the person who set the rules, right, in this Wen Chang society, the society that promotes all these good things. So, you should follow it. Uh, you know, you should not, you should not preach, uh, go against what you preach. So the rest is just simply, you know, you being very um, earnest in your, um, in your, you know, reporting to the heavens. Um, so, you know, I'll tell you about this. I hope that you can make use of this advice. Uh, there's, there's a last, there's a last straw I give it to you. Hopefully you can make use of it. Um... He said that you already know all these teachings, to be honest. You read the teachings, you talk about it. But the thing is that uh, you forget easily. That means your root is not strong. Your root in cultivating this goodness in, in, in your... your the, the, the symptom is your persistence is not there. You forgot easily, immediately back to your old habit. That means your foundations, your root in cultivating goodness in, you know, actually acting out good heart is not there yet. The seeds of goodness is not strong enough in you. Uh, so it ends up, everything is very superficial and facade. Everything is just for a show. Um, none of them is actually grounded, uh, truly uh, from the genuine heart. Um, and 
besides that, you have filled yourself with a lot of evil thoughts. Everything is like these ropes that ties you up, bounds you up, and it's very um, entangled. So your, your mind is entangled with all these um, unwholesome evil thoughts. That that means it's too selfish and too much of this, uh, too much of this um, rubbish. So, and then even worse than that is you blame others for that. You're the one who gives rise to your thought. You are responsible for your thoughts. So why are you blaming someone else outside? Blame the heavens, blame the people, and thinking you are a good person. That's called delusion in the truest sense of the word, right? Delusion, as in you think what is not actually there. So he is actually not qualified as a good person. In, based on his thought, speech, action. And he thought he is a good person just because of these few little shows that he puts on. So that says pretty much about um, ourselves as well. Like, am I like that? To some degree, we are, in a sense. In, at least in my case, all this show and everything needs to be tear down and reconstruct in the most truest sense. Like, how good I am and how can I get better? That's the moral we need to get out of it. Um, so... In this case, his seed is full of thorns instead of seeds for fruits or grains. So he seed, he planted a seed of thorns of those um, unwholesome, I mean, bad seeds. So how can he expect to reap sweet fruits, you know, sweet results? Cause is not right, so the result will not be right. Or cause is not, uh, you don't plant, you want that result to be good, but what you planted is not uh, the seed is not the, the, the result you want. So it's contrasting. So from now on, he then he gave him a prescription of his disease. From now on, so now I have tear down this face, uh, tear down the facade, tear down the superficial stuff, all these fakery delusions. I give you the actual reality, the sense, uh, give you a true report of who you really are. Now, what you need to do is... As long as you have give rise to any thoughts of greed, lust, wandering thoughts, any like random wandering thoughts, or trying to be, you know, back to your old habit of being fake, in a sense, trying to put up a show, etc., 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 all these, what we call wandering thoughts. So what you need to do in the first order of business is to Gather your strength, your mental strength. That means concentrate. Okay? Make aware of this thing. And sweep, sweep them away. Uh, keep them in a box. That's how I call it. All right. They didn't say it there. They say you need to tidy them up. So I'm a visual learner, so I always tidy them in a box. So just all in the back, as long as you like it that way. So just tidy them up one side. Um, and then leave this mental space for only one thought. That is a thought of kindness. Uh, that's it. You 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 clean up the space for only the things that you truly cherish, and this this thing is good deeds. So this is a seed. So how do we say good deeds? How do we define it? In this case, you already said if you can do things that benefit others in in your power, just do it. Just do it. Don't think too much. Just do it. Uh, don't think about your uh, repayment. It's, like, you know, this is not mortgage or anything. Don't think about repayment. Don't think about fame. Who knows? You know, who's there? Oh, yeah, my boss is there, so I'm doing this. Oh, my uh, master is there, so I'm doing that. I'm trying to bait praises. Come on, wise people will see through this very quickly. Don't, they don't need that. You don't need that. All you need to do is, is this right? Yes. Is this truly helping them in the circumstance? Yes, do it. Is it in my power that I can act upon quickly? Yes. Then do it. That's it. So good things are simple. Only those crappy stuff that are complicated, to be honest. All this complicated stuff, all this uh, this and that, uh, you and I, and then you know, all these emotions and all these up and downs, to be honest, they are there because they are deluded. Clean, focused, pure stuff, simple, straightforward. That's why some people who are very successful or very uh, like Buddha or anything, when they say something, they say it out with such clarity, with such directions, with such focusness, because their mind is not jumbled up. Their energy are not dissipated. Their energy is focused. Their energy is, is directive. It's powerful. 
because they concentrate on, on what matters. Same thing goes for us. We might not be able to do the, the high level stuff in our career or even in our cultivation, but what we can do is we can pick up those energies, uh, divert it to something that really matters. In our case, not our case, in everyone's case, it should be directed towards um, goodness, kindness. And what is goodness, kindness? It's not appearing as good people or anything. That appearance is just a result. The cause is actually one, be a genuine person, like genuinely care for others, genuinely want to help in your position, maybe as a you know staff, maybe you have knowledge, you can help them to be better at their work because I'm, I'm working, right? This is how I do it. And some people, if they're at home or anything, you can help by, you know, giving, uh, just being there for your family, listen to them or have a coffee, uh, watch a movie. So just, just be good uh, in, in the sense of genuine, genuinely want to help. And that's it. And, and, and when that level of uh, sincerity has accumulated, then that's what Master Ching Kong keeps saying about purity. So I have the Buddha's picture. Purity, uh, equality, uh, uh, right awakening, and compassion. Right? Zhen Chen. Why he start with Zhen Chen? Zhen Chen is sincerity, right? Zhen Chen, Qing Jing, Ping Deng, Zhen Jue, Zibei. So those are not slogans. Those are processing. Like those are the steps. They, they all, they can be done at once if you're talented enough. But normal people will start with sincerity first, right? And that's why Master Ying Guang also talk about the same thing. Zhu Jing Chun Chen. Just uh, you start on one point. And what's the point? Being sincere. So why we chant Amitofo? Same thing. It's it's the contents of Amitofo. If we don't understand, which we don't, to be honest, the real Amitofo content includes this you know, cleaning up your, I mean, put your rubbish aside. You may not be able to stop it altogether. Just put it aside and leave your mental space, which is your energy, to something that really matters. Uh, don't allow this little bickering of, you know, you and I, or this, uh, uh, you know, like, or this greed. He already mentioned it, greed, lust, or anger to disturb your mind. So that's why it's called Yixing Bulwan. One mind undisturbed. When you reach that equilibrium, nothing can move you anymore, to be honest. Like, sure, I die. So, I go to a better place. You have that level of confidence. That confidence, if you gain that confidence, trust me, man, nothing can move you. They can even murder you or anything. You go like, okay, sure, this is my karma, that karma, gone. That's why I'm saying the biggest problem in life is not lack of this, lack of that. It's we have too much of this, too much of that. And and what we need is to solve the problem of life and death, death and life. That's the biggest problem in life. Then we talk about, because without this samsara, these sufferings, this is a suffering because they keep going on and on and on and on and on. That's why Buddha is here telling us, hey man, like, you know, there might be a, re there might be a way out. Uh, I'm not sure if you like it, but here's my example. If you can accept it, then follow the prescription I give. And there are many prescriptions based on many kind of people. For us, um, chanting Amitofo is the best way. And why we do that? They already explained it in here. Same thing as Amitofo. You move all this rubbish one side and only take care of something that is good. Take care of something that is valuable. What is valuable? Something that connects you with others. Something that actually brings value in the life. Uh, what brings value in the life? Sharing. Shares what? If you're angry, you, you, you share negativity. If you, um, if, you, if you are full of gratitude and full of um, hope or in the very sense, full of um, positive energy, you will naturally do good stuff. So you want to share something good so that in re it will come back to you in return as well by itself. Um, so make it simple. Uh, doesn't matter big or small, doesn't matter hard or easy. As long as you can do it, do it earnestly um, and do it patiently. If you cannot do it in your power, within your power, you still also have to be um, uh, diligent in making sure this can be completed. Uh, like this can reach its completion. So in your power, you do it. 
doesn't matter you someone seeing you doing it or not doesn't matter uh what form of repayment or doesn't matter it's big thing or small thing easy thing or hard thing um, be patiently earnestly execute this good task but if your power cannot reach that it's outside your ability then try to find a way what he mean by diligent is don't just say oh, i can't do it by but if you can just find people who can do it find recommend to someone who can do it uh you might know someone or if you don't know just try to find like put it in facebook or something just yeah do your best do your best okay do your best to complete these good things as long as it's good um and the alfano's already mentioned that that's why we have the alfan first they talk about what is good what is not all right they make it many many map right uh, what is appear to be good what is actually good uh, half good full good this is a lesson to be learned for many lives and so take your time understand it as long as master ching comic is simple as long as it's benefiting others really benefiting them then it's good um, if it's just selfish or very narrow minded only for yourself then it's not good um, and he goes further and say you actually benefit others to be honest you are benefiting yourself if you truly want to benefit others you will benefit yourself don't even need to think about it it's law and cause cause and effect mirror reflection um, if you only benefit yourself you're actually harming yourself yeah um yeah if you can see in histories um, those people who are just think about self-interest 100 percent it's not they're not going anywhere because they're in Chinese. There's a term called "hua di wei lao." You're turning a, you're turning around. You're, you're drawing a circle about yourself. Everything you think about is this little bubble of yourself. It's narrow. Uh, it's narrow minded. Uh, to be honest, if you want to expand, you need to include everyone into your calculations, into your thinking, and and in this term, this self cannot be just this person. It has to be bigger and bigger there are ways to expand it starting from say your wife your husband your siblings your family and then expand this is how we do it and you expand to this society this country but you cannot stop there you can expand to all beings not just human all species not just all species this earth not just this earth this universe this is how it works and this is how buddha achieved uh, his enlightenment slowly expanding it so same same goes to here so back to the point, he has two criteria to tell him to follow. Number one is patient. Number two is persistence. I mean, uh, uh, long-term mind, long-term, 永恒心, 永远心, a mind that uh, mind uh, persistence. Yeah, okay. to be patient and to be persistent. All right, be patient while we're doing it. It does not happen overnight. That's one thing I need to learn as well is to be patient. So we get agitated sometimes. Want to get things done quick but if we rush the process uh, sometimes um, it goes in the opposite direction and sometimes your mind is not prepared and prematurely you know not enough so time is important is an ingredient in making things work including everything you know everything we do now uh, your career your relationships your um, Dharma cultivations time is an essential ingredient just because someone can do it in three years doesn't mean you can because your mind is not ready your heart is not ready sometimes your that means your, your energy are still very dissipated in many wandering thoughts so you need to find a way to to to, to give yourself a condition where you can slowly slowly um, think let this thing not matter to you anymore and then slowly uh, let it come back to what really important some people takes time so that's why some people take 10 years 20 years some people takes three years some people take a night to achieve Kung Fu champion everyone has their own progression and you need to know what where you are uh, your preparedness or not so patience is important uh, do not say just because you know I say three years and I can't achieve uh, one mind undisturbed is uh, uh, so senior um, then I give up. No, don't do that. Um, as long as you're willing to 
you, uh, which I will bring out later. If as long as you you understand, uh, you get increase your understanding. Um, like just now, I play piano. I was like, yes, this piece is hard. Seriously, like all this jumping around and all that, my fingers go into break. But the thing is, if I can play one more bar better than yesterday, then I made a progress. Obviously, I'm being lazy and give myself excuse. I should play better. But still, the point is, if you can play, if you can do one step better than you were yesterday, you take one step forward from what you were yesterday, then you are, you are there. Keep going. And this thing will accumulate into something amazing. You just need to patient, which means give time. Second thing is be persistent. Have a long-term mindset. This thing's going going forward. Not this life, then next life. That kind of mindset, like that kind of level of persistence. Only this kind of mindset, patience and persistence, then you will achieve where you are. Um, that's it. Patient persistence. Obviously, direction needs to be correct as well. If your direction is towards opposite of your you know, kindness, then obviously you will become worst. So, Mr. Chai, Teacher Chai also told us, pay, uh, effort has results, but does not necessarily a good results. It has to be a right effort. Uh, I know I drag a bit too much, but what Buddha say, Zheng Jing Jing, uh, right effort, is you need to put your effort into a right direction. Only then you can do that. All right. These are one of the eight noble paths, basics of Buddhism, guys. Have a look. Um, basics, but not, we're not there. So work on it, guys. We'll, we'll work on it. And then do not be slackish. Uh, uh, do not lie to yourself. Do not um, drag yourself. Like, let me say, do not, do not slack yourself off. Do not um, lie to yourself. Be honest. Be true to yourself. What is wrong? What is good? All the goods, all the bads. Understand it clearly. Uh, then you have the energy. To, to work on it. So I know where I am. Now I need to work on it. Yes, I may not do it in one day, two days, maybe 10 years. I don't care. As long as every day I'm aware of it and I, I keep working on it or I follow whatever conditions come along my way that can help me to propel forward. You never know. There's so many, so many um, ways to help you forward. As long as you're willing to hop on the train and good forward, there will be good condition that helps you. Uh, the heavens will help those who help themselves. Okay. 天助,自助也, something like that. So, do it in the long run. Slowly, slowly, do it in the long run. You will naturally receive response. 自有不测效验. 自有不测效验. So, 效验 is response. 不测 is out of your expectations. Good things come out of your expectations. And that happens to me and my, my family as well, my brother as well. Like, we got, we got what we want like our career and all that, they just come to you without you actually frantically look around. It actually comes to you if, if you do your stuff well, if you do your, on your own path, right? You do your thing properly. Yeah. Be a normal, genuine person and improving yourself. It will come to you. And that's why you cannot slack yourself. Like if you have a chance to contribute, contribute. Um, and then do not lie to yourself. Be honest to yourself. If you can do this too, do not slack and be honest to yourself and you do it in the long run, then you will have response outside your expectation. Good response. So, Mr. Mister Yu, you are very sincere in your seek for help in front of me. So this is how I repay you. See, they, they always have that mindset. I need to repay. If you have one ounce of sincerity, I will come back and help you. You have no sincerity at all. I don't think Mr. Zhang can even help him at all. Even he appears in front of him. He'll be like, what is this crazy man talking about? Get out of my house. How can you... If he's so self-deluded to that level where he can't even listen in, hey, you can't blame heavens. They already sent someone else and tell you, hey, man, um, something's wrong with you. Here's how you fix it. And he's like, get out of my house, man. I'm a good man and all that. And then, um, yeah, say sayonara to him. What can you do? Buddha can't even help him. So you only can help yourself. Only then all other conditions will come and help you. If you don't want to help, don't want to be helped, no matter God, Jesus, um, Muhammad, all sorts of 
good people or good sage or prophets of all the gods coming up to you and tell you, I want to help you. It's useless. Even Buddha in front of you, you'll be like, no. Yeah. I think you can't be helped because you don't want to help yourself. So always want to be helped. Always be willing to listen, even though it might not be right at times. Or maybe you're not sure if it's right or not because we don't have wisdom. Just just always have an open mind, uh, able to accept uh, 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 different things. And, and then follow the, you know, use the teachings as your guideline, whether this is right or wrong. So anyway, back to the point. Um, yeah. And he just disappeared after walking into his room, the direction where he pray every day. So he's just like walking there and then Mr. Yu was like, okay, I'll follow him. And then when he lift his head up, it's gone. Yeah. Um, obviously, he said thank you in the form of burning the incense. Um, and, you know, next day, Yuan Dan, so it's a New Year's Eve, right? If you remember the book or the TV, they, they have a scene where they're miserable. But the only daughter surviving, uh, the, the blind, the mother who was blind because of too much crying, and this Mr. Yu who was financially bankrupt in a sense. He, he, terrible, everything's shit. I mean, sorry, everything's bad. My apologies. See, my mouth karma is bad. Um, everything is very, um, everything doesn't go his way. Everything falls apart. So, so, and so next day on the new year, it represents a new life to him as well. He's awake. Uh, that's what we call born again in the best sense, in the truest sense of the word. Born again is not like you put your head in the water and then you suddenly born again. It's you are aware where you are now. Now you want to refresh yourself. Don't be trapped by the rituals. This is the truest sense of born again. Okay, So he's born again. So he prayed to the heavens and the earth and swear that he will change his past. He knows where he's going wrong now. Now he wants to make it right, right the wrongs. Um, then he started to do good deeds. Um, and to symbolizes his starting point in his life, he changed his name to Pure Heart. Because his main problem is his mind is too tainted, too much unwholesome thought, allowing this unwholesome thought running rampage in his mental space. So in, from now on, I want to be a person with pure mind. So I'm Mr. Yu of the pure mind. So if you do have a new direction, you can ask. You can also give yourself a name, you know, Mr. Lee of Pure Land or something like that. Um, some pure mind makes pure land. Pure land comes from pure mind. Same thing. So, um, yes, and and once he did all that, you know, ritual and symbolism to remind himself that he needs to change, that comes the hardest part, the actual work of it. It's easy to, you know, go kneel in front of master and say, I will change, and my name is changed. But it's another thing to actually put in action every day outside the look of others and then ask yourself, have I done it better? Have I done it better? This takes persistence, efforts, a huge patience. So that's where you build your patience in everyday life, the mundane life. The mundane life is the one that you, we all need to face. It's not the big event that comes happen to you. It's the mundaneness every day. How do you make sure you're not falling into that trap? habits so it takes perfect balance you can't be too tense you cannot be too relaxed which is slack too tense over tense ends up snapping and reverting all your progress so you need to relax when you need to be on the right path you when you really need to relax sleep or you know just have a normal talk with your friends go ahead but when it's time to pick up your energy pick up yourself and move forward then you should it comes in many forms. It comes in your career, it comes in your family, it comes in your relationships. Anything that is not resolved needs to be resolved. That's part of cultivation. And resolving what's outside, including resolving what's inside. If you resolve what's not, like what's stuck inside, you will be able to resolve what's stuck outside. Outside and inside is one. And to be honest, a lot of times it's the inside that gets stuck and distorted what's actually happening outside. 
if your heart is clear and smooth, to be honest, outside doesn't matter how terrible it is, it will be changed. That's what Buddha called Jing Sui Xing Zhuan. The environment changes according to the heart. And the knot inside, the knot that were trapped inside needs to be released. And that's where the work is. To put it in more concrete terms, whatever problems you face when you're looking at external world of you, the people, the things, the works or anything, is the problem, it reflects the problem from the inside. So take a, take a time to figure it out, like how, how to do it. And this book helps. So one of the biggest not, right? I keep talking about this term and then like, what, what do you mean, Dylan? What not? Okay, let's look at the book, right? I'm not talking out of my mind, right? I'm just, this is in the book. So what, what does it say? I will not allow, from now on, I will not allow wandering thoughts to take over, okay? First few days when he started, his mind is always like usual, always like us, always wandering around, uh, non-stop, bullet train, keep coming to and fro, to and fro. And walk among these knots, these issues that he has inside, wandering thoughts, the worst, there are two worst things. First thing is, is otherwise he won't mention it out of all these wandering thoughts. Number one is doubt. Cynicism, doubt. Number two is laziness. So, doubt. Why do we say doubt is a problem? Not greed, hatred, ignorance. Why did he say all this greed, hatred, ignorance? Why did he say doubt? Because greed, hatred, ignorance can be resolved if you have the will, if you have confidence, if you understand how to resolve it, if, 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 if you follow the method. But this doubt, if you have that, and you allow that to fester to a level where you can't even believe in anything anymore, or you, you don't even have um, foundation, then nothing other people will say will help you at all. Say, I doubt the teaching. I doubt, um, I doubt my doctor. I don't think he's a good person. I don't think the, the medicine he administered will help me. I don't think he will, I don't think my surgeon will do the best. I think he will do something like this kind of mindset, right? And I'm taking a very extreme example. If this happens, what happens is you're supposed, you're supposed to be okay after you eat this medicine or uh, after this surgery, you know, um, you, you'll be fine as usual. But because you're doubt, you resist treatments, ends up what happened is you, you're getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, what could be a path of your salvation, put in more religious term, or a path of your recovery, block because of your doubt. Doubt is the worst form of delusion. And as a pure land practitioner, as we are here, doubt is the worst thing. In the Sutra of Infinite Life, right? Buddha already mentioned, doubt is the worst thing. Even Bodhisattva, who has not attained the, the, the full enlightenment, is on the way. They have doubt on pure land. And they can't go there. So this is how terrible it is. Like This is how serious it is. So Mr. Yu aware of this problem. He's, he might doubt the teachings of the sage or all this doubt coming up you know, without him controlling it. So he needs to put it away. Doubt can be solved by wisdom, but wisdom cannot be gained without confidence in the teaching, without faith in the teaching. I'm not talking about blind faith. I'm not talking about some, I don't know anything. It's that faith comes from a confidence in that person, knowing that that person has been through what I've been through, like you confident in these doctors in 10 years of training, going through all that processes, and then another seven years in specialist training just to get this thing right. i confident in his education, in his professionalism. Obviously, they are bad apples, unfortunately. But in general, these people, why is it so, so, so tightly regulated? Because this is not an easy thing. People's life in your hand. So they are all trained and all that. So I my confidence in this person that he will save my life. And then you're willing to submit yourself to his surgery or anything. Same goes to our sage teaching. Nothing different from that. I'm confident in Buddha's ability to know my problem. All right? This is not blind faith. This is very aware. I'm aware that who Buddha is. He's Shaiyamani Buddha. He's in historical. That's why Master Shewu talks about this 
in understanding Buddhism. He talks about the history. Why? Because if we don't know the person, it's hard to have confidence, isn't it? Now we know that person, what kind of person he is, why he do that, and when he started, how did he start? You know, how, how persevered he is. And then when he formed the Sangha or from his organization, what did he do? If you actually read more into his actual deeds that he did when he appeared in our world, you get more confident. And hence, you are more confident in what he said, including Amitabha Buddha. And your confidence in Buddha needs to reach a level where you fully understand this man or this man who appear in front of us is to help us to attain enlightenment. Why? Because the pain of life and death and then repeating that pain of life and death. What comes with life and death? Separation. I believe. Or you can't get what you wish. Uh, meeting someone you hate. Uh, life, age, illness, death. Your loved ones leaving you away. Those are real problems, guys. Those are real pain. Doesn't matter how well cultivated, it's still a pain. Even Buddha feels it, understands it. So that's why he's here to tell us that there's a way out of it and there's a way you can help others out of it. That's Bodhisattva Path. But the main point is you understand this character, you understand this person. Why I would put more effort into this point because right now it's not the problem of whether I can or cannot. It's whether am I wanting to do Am I wanting to believe I want to do it? The first step is The first point is your confidence is your root. If you have no confidence at all at what you're doing, no matter how well you do it, you keep scared, doubting yourself and it, it will fall apart. So you need this to glue them together. You need to start with confidence. I need to start with confidence. How to gain confidence, more understanding of what's going on in life and then what the teaching is, where it came from. For us, it's like that. All right. There are special cases like Master Hai Xian, who does not need that. Who can, he has a deep, we call it deep root. He can just like, okay, teacher tell me to need Amitofo, I need Amitofo. I chant Amitofo. And then, uh, and then he just do it without stopping because he, he believes in his teacher. Same thing. He has a strong root. He believes his teacher will not lie to him. Master Ching Kong as well. He believes in three of his teacher, especially um, Mr. Zhang, uh, Zhang Jia Dasi, uh, one of his teacher, uh, and, and Mr. Fang, and then Mr. Li. So he believes in them and he holds this until now. Lao Si Bui Pian Wo. My teacher will not lie to me. The whole world can criticize this sutra, but I will not leave this sutra. This compilation by Mr. Xia. So this is his faith, his confidence, and what's the result? Here we are. So we too need to bring that confidence into our own circle as well. And first thing is by ourselves. So Mr. Yu has to overcome doubt in the teaching. That's the first thing. So that's why many religions as well talk about faith. But if they clarify it properly, it will not become a blind faith. It will become a strong confidence. All right. I also mentioned one before, devotion can be good and bad. If a devotion becomes misguided, it becomes a terrorism, like Islamic terrorism, because it's misguided. It's not what it really is. The proper devotion is you actually want to, if you are believing in God or not, that it's showing your love love of God to the other people. That means care for the sickness, care for the ill, uh, show the mercy towards people who have surrendered themselves, something like that. Uh, humanities, you know, being human. So that's a real devotion to God. For us, our devotion to the path of enlightenment as well. Same thing, showing the compassion towards others, not stuck in the own circle and thinking I'm already enlightened. No. Go out in society and actually do it. But obviously, there are levels. If you can't handle this outside influence, then it's best to stay inside under the guidance if you have people who actually want to guide you and you understand this is a good person. And then you help. This is Master Ching Kong did when he was young. He also learned from Mr. Lee for 10 years, first five years, and then he extended for another five years. So he himself is an example we can refer to and apply in our life. So... Back to the point, the, the, the summary is be confident and 
have a confident, well grounded, right? Otherwise, your confidence will fall apart. Any sort of allegation, anything. So, have a real grounded confidence. How do you do that? Understand the person. Buddha has his chronicles. Master Ching Kong has his chronicles. Pure Land has his chronicles, guys. It's not coming out of air. Some people tell you, no, it's founded. It has a proper vow. It has a proper faith. 48 vows as a foundation. Just like a company set up, you need to have company statement, mission statement. So I'm bringing a real life example into this. Pure Land is founded in these 48 vows and understanding this will help us understand why Buddha is doing that in the first place. Going through this process may be tedious, but when you're free, just have a look and you start to understand where he came from. Once you are starting to see why the founder of Pure Land wants to do that, you started to grow the confidence in him. And in your action, you will always do something similar to him. That's congratulations. All right? This, this wins over 10,000 times chanting of his name. Not saying you shouldn't, saying that you naturally will want to ch chant him his name 10,000 times when you reach that level. So it doesn't matter. You can come from the outside or you can come from the inside. It's the same. It's a, it's a round shape. So back to the point. After the confidence issues, he also need to focus on the slackage. That's the hardest. Laziness. Being, uh, you know, this is a good weather. Let's have a sleep. Another two hours. So this thing cuts off your flow, your momentum. If your momentum is cut off, what happens is you have to start again. You have to find back that energy again. So um, don't be sad if you have doubt or you have slack. Understand that you can only do that much and then pick up from where you are and see if you have improved. If I'm slacking for one hour today and next month I slack for half an hour, then it's an improvement. Yeah, think it that way. Always think it that way. Don't 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 sit there and say, oh, I, I slack. Come on. I mean, we are here because we slack. If we are not slack, we're already up there and talk about better, I mean, the actual sutras, not, not this foundation. It's like those students that didn't pass the exam, right? They all stuck in the same grade and they have to revise this uh, same foundation because we haven't passed the exam. So if you pass this exam, you've done full confidence, full uh, diligence, then you're already up there in pure land and talking about who to help. Hey, I'll go there, you go there, okay? And then I'll meet up with you in another life, something like that. So don't worry about that. We'll, we'll get to that level. We will. We will, guys. We will. But right now is we need to focus on the basics. So these two, confidence and slackishness. So if I can slack half an hour instead of slack one hour, I consider it a success. And I'll move on. I'm more confident. I like it. I, I feel like this can be done. I actually like what I'm doing, right? Bodhisattva as well, they got more energy the more they do it. And obviously they are not ADHD like me, but they are very calm. But what I'm saying is they got more they got more energy from actually doing more. And hence the slackishness is not an issue for them. They do it 24 seven, like without stopping, they were like, how can I help more? How can I help more? Why? Because they are actually happy. They actually got, got the best form of rewards by just helping them genuinely. It happens. So, so for you as well, same. And let time do its job. Let you do your job, let time do its job, okay? Build your confidence through this understanding. Build your uh, less like uh, uh, robustness in in your in your diligence by trying to do a bit more one day by one day. And as time goes on, um, he still have he still found himself sinking in his old habit. So what he do? He go for a harder measure. So you understand like oh I'm still not there and then I'm still like floating. When you reach that level, you kind of like I want to go further. Then he go in front of Guan Yin Pusa, the uh, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, and swear himself in. Say, and then he prostrate until he, his forehead bleeds. And then with full sincerity and respect, he swore in front of her. So this is genuine. He really wants to get this right. right? You will know if you really want that. There's no other way. You know, doesn't have to make your forehead bleed, but naturally you will want to do something about it. And this is one of the form he appears. It's called Zhu Jing Chun Chen. I mean, uh, inside there's a respect. I mean, 里面有静, 外面就有理, 
自自然的啊，自然的。So the point is that his form of respect and sincerity in his jet is the most earnest form is prostration until he bleeds. All right, um, and then he swore in front of the Guan Yin Pusa. I pray, I vow to keep my pure heart untainted, remain pure, remain kind. All right, and I pray that my more uh, my 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 diligence, uh, my strength in performing kindness gets better and better. So he vowed that he wants to keep his mind pure. He wants to keep his kind deeds going better. If I have a little ounce of slack in my actions and thoughts, then I will fall into the hell forever. But that's a serious, serious, serious vow. That means he's resolved. He has full resolve to go forward. There's no ship behind him anymore. He burned all the ships. There's only one way to go. That's the level we need to have if we want to go to Pyeongchang.、Um, every morning,、um, he prayed to Guanyin Pusa, the Bodhisattva Guanyin, one hundred times. To pray for a proper, you know, to pray for, yeah, I need to research Ying Xiang, maybe a a sign,、uh, maybe a a way to encourage him to move forward. Either way, for us, same applies the same. Like once you reach that level, right now we're still doing that. Once you reach that level, you you like okay, that's it, I'm ready, and you will know when you're ready, and you will you will have that strong resolve. So we need to build up.、Um, And our biggest obstacle is two things. Remember that if you forget everything about today, it's fine. Just remember these two: confidence, build up confidence in the sage teaching. So be confident in the sage teaching. What is the sage teaching? Number one, everyone is Buddha. So you are Buddha, mate. You're just recovering your full state, like one of those movie, like Avatar, you know, Abender. So you're going back to the full state. All right, you're not, you're not small. Okay, you are Buddha. What does it mean, Buddha? Everyone's equal. Everyone's compassionate, right? Not higher, not lower. Just you, just Buddha. Higher means arrogance. Lower means inferiority complex. You don't want that. Just Buddha, just real. So that's number one. Have that faith, and then everything comes. Number two, slack. That's something I'm figuring out at the moment as well. Yeah.、Uh, what I do is my metric is if I slack less, then I'm. I'm I'm one step forward, but I yeah, work on it, work on it, yeah. Okay, so that's it.、Um, that's it for this session. I think I I, I pull a bit longer on the confidence because I can't emphasize it enough. After reading a lot of a、uh, patriarch, right, Master Ching Kong, Master、um, and Sutra and、uh, and and Master Ying Guang's teaching, they're all talking about one thing: is you need to have confidence, bro. Otherwise, not nothing's work. You can't use scientific understanding in this. Science is always about doubt, all right. Doubt this, doubt that, so that you can find solution in the questions. That's fine if you're doing these technical studies. You should. I mean, you need to find out. You need to like testing a thing. You need to see if what goes wrong. But in the sage teaching, there's no room for that. You only either have a doubt or you fall apart. That's it. And you need to you need to get the doubt out of the way. Only then you can fully immerse yourself in the teaching and fully exp- fully unleash your full potential. That's full confidence. I'm not talking about arrogance, guys. Full confidence. Full confidence is different from arrogance. A lot of people say, "Ah, you're too confident." That means they are diluted. If if a person is arrogant, they are diluted. Full confidence person will not always step over people or being brash. Full confidence will bring other people to full confidence. That's a person who has full confidence. They always have the energy about them. They always bring you up, and then they bring you up in a way you can do it. Not some one million dollar entry fees and talk about some, you know, stand. Oh, hey, you I can be good. Yeah, yeah. And then in the end of the day, nothing happens. No. Full confidence. So you bring other people to full confidence. Just like light bulb, right? It shines everyone equally, same. Unless you block it yourself, so nothing can be done. So back to the point.、Um, we're here.、Uh, congratulations、um, for this second reading to myself, to yourself,、uh, to everyone who sees this、uh, now. In future, doesn't matter. The point is,、um, I mean, I'm glad you're here.、Uh, I'm glad we have these sessions.、Um, I'm glad that this story has been told in in English,、uh, wider audience. The point 
is we need to um, keep going at it, understand why, be real to yourself, um, build confidence through ground through understanding, in sage teaching, in the teaching of enlightenment, in the teaching of of sage, of, of people who fully aware. Um, you cannot use doubt, and you can. Um, selfishness is your obstacle as well. So let's work on it together. Yeah. Um, Jiayu in Chinese means uh, Thank you. So I would like to open a bit uh, for for our discussion. Is there any follow up you guys like to know, or anything other than this? Thank Thanks you. for the perspective you share as well in the in the you know the Mister Lu's yeah. Ten minutes become one hour. One hour become two hour. That's yeah. that's preventing the fire from spreading. I want to add on that as well, Master Mister Mister Dai, which is one of the Sushong in the brothers in the temple in Brisbane. He told me that know who you are is important because if you are level of a straw, and fire fire is like desires, angers, and everything. Your job is to get out of the way of fire. You don't want to be in contact with the fire because you can't withstand it. You get burned. So Mr. Mm -hmm. Lu aware is where he is. If you are level of a walk, which is you made of steel, then you can withstand fire. Then you can try and do, you know, how, how well I do against fire, but not too long because you get burned. If you are gold, uh, like Buddha, then you don't, you don't care about that. You just go into it. It has nothing. It will only benefit you. It will not harm you. Mm -hmm. So know which level of cultivation or which level of preparedness we are, then we act accordingly. So that's why I learned as well. I'm a straw. So get out of the fire. I would like to ask you a question. So back in back in primary school, right? Did you like have a look at this um mathematic books? They talk about algebra X R. What is it? Right? Oh. I have that. I know, all I know is five, 10 divided by 5 was the 2. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I would never understand that whole algebra thing before that 乘法出法, all that, you know, um, square, you know. Mm -hmm. And now it makes sense to me. Same thing for you. Now we're at primary school, we're learning 10 divided by 5 equals the 2. Uh -huh. So our job is like in primary school, we learn how to get all these basics right. Don't worry about that. We understand we'll get there yet. We will get there because if we don't get there, we won't go to Pure Land. If mm -hmm. we don't get that this life, we have to get it next life. I don't know how far that next life is. I don't mm -hmm. prefer to drag it until then. Mm -hmm. But in this life, I'm pretty sure that um, what we want to do is, um, you know, like like you say, you already have that direction. You want this, right? You want that level, isn't it? Mm. I'll translate that next time. Okay. Spoiler alert. So, so um, yeah. Same for me. I don't know how to do it. So I don't worry about it now. What I worry about is how can I do this? That's it. That's all I care about. I can't. Because I'm not there yet. So right mm. now, what I really worry about is uh, That's my worry. Because mm. that's my level. I have so much crap in my mind. And I understand my crap is working against what I want to do now. Or rather, my vow or my commitment to the goal of attaining enlightenment is not strong enough. I'm still get lured by the outside. Fine. Mm. I know why I am. Right now, I'm not going to say uh, give up or anything, but I'm not going to say right now I want to do that. Like That thing alone is also another wandering thoughts. Knowing that level is good is enough for me. I know I will get there. That's the confidence. I will get there. But how do I get mm. there? I, I give it I, I leave it in the hands of Buddha. There are there are conditions to help mm. you. Trust me, mm. there are conditions that the yuan fun conditions is very uh, mm. unfathomable. Not because you cannot think about it, it's just you can't mm. it happens to you. And then if you are well 
prepared in your daily mm. life, that mm. condition will actually push you to that level. You will realize mm. you actually get there without you knowing it. And mm. someone will tell you you already reached there. So right now, our, our worries is that right now we, we, um, we, we need to, to, to do what we um, haven't yet done, you know, our homework. Um, how, do, how do we actually do this? Because going to Pure Land requires you to pack up your wandering thoughts in the box and leave only Amitofo. That's already hard enough for us. Uh, his level is already... I can say it's mm. one. It's a little bit of 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 a then we can talk about all this. So I want to reach that level of, you know, um, when I move, it's all good. When my mind moves, it's all good. When my mind is at peace, nothing happens. And Master Ching Kong already said, the whole point of chanting Amitofo is to replace the wandering thoughts. If you have no wandering thoughts, there's no need to chant Amitofo. Because I don't know what it means, but what kind of my low, shallow understanding is when you don't have anything to clean, you don't need to clean something that's already mm. clean. Mm. Mm. So take, take your time. Take your time, Maggie. You, 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 you're on the right path. You're in the right direction. Yeah. Yes, we are. We truly are. You, we, we, we already have this condition. It's just up to you like how much you can put in, how much you can push, mm. uh, how much you can use your resources to achieve doesn't matter how other people achieve that is good to have a goal but right now you need to tell yourself how much it can i do in my actual real life all these apps and everything they are fun i play games every day but there comes a time you get sick of it you stop it mm. conditions mm. and the time you wake up and say hey i want to do something about my life and this comes up to my life and i want to make use of it and you make use of it and you wear out of your previous habits just that you need to keep an eye out, always be aware, and always remind yourself, have this session helps you a bit, you know, try to, you remind me, I remind you. But, mm. yeah, mm. take your time, yeah? Patience and, tang, they, they already give us the formula, patience and persistence, a long-term mindset. Mm. You get that. Mm. So, uh, let's chant 10 times Amitofo and then dedication. Ah, uh, me to for a 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 me for a me to for a me to for may the deck may the merits accrue from this discussion uh dhamma discussion talk um dedicated to all beings uh, uh and their karma creditors who are sufferings uh, from natural disaster, calamities, um, wars, and all that, uh, and from the, the pandemics, um, and all the families and their creditors, uh, karma creditors, uh, be liberated from this samsara of six realms, um, and also dedicate to all pure land practitioners. Um, may they all achieve uh, one mind undisturbed to go to pure land. And may all practitioners of all forms of Buddhism be able to achieve enlightenment as soon as possible uh, in the right time. And may all good religious practitioners uh, promote harmonious interaction with one another, loving kindness among their people and with each other. Uh, and may, may all the peoples of all creeds and 
religions and um, or walks of life uh, work together towards the world peace. And may we dedicate Mary to Venerable Master Ching Kong for his um, prolonged state in our Saha world. Uh, may his Dharma spread wide and far. May the seeds he have planted uh, be grown into a blossoming body tree. And may we all carry these seeds with us and plant it in our own conditions. May we also dedicate merits to Venerable Master, Venerable, Xie, uh, Venerable Wu Xing uh, in his uh, Dharma, Dharma uh, propagation. May his um, uh, Dharma body and all the teachings um, pass on to the next generation. May also dedicate uh, merits to Venerable Xie Wu. May he be safe and be uh, Dharma, filled with Dharma joy um, whenever he are. And may we always be able to hear to his teachings and practice it accordingly. So may the merits and, mercu uh, merits and virtues accrue from this work. Adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above. And relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion. And leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Ah, be hopeful. Thank you, everyone. See you guys uh, next session. Um, hope you, you guys are all well. Be safe. Happy, happy. Mm -hmm. Get better. And one day we're all together. Move all good. Not move, nothing. Yeah. That's a very mm -hmm. rough translation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye.